Welcome to the Mobile Money Nation. My name is AJ, and today I'm going to talk about the top 10 reasons you should max out your HSA before your 401k and before your IRA. Now, for those that don't know, an HSA is a health savings account. It is a retirement account that you can actually use to pay for medical expenses. And I have videos going over what an HSA is and a lot of details about the account, but you're going to learn a lot from this video as well as I go through this top 10. So let me just jump right in and we're going to talk about the number 10 reason, which is employment employer contributions. So while this may not be a benefit for everyone that has an HSA account, there are many employers who actually contribute funds to your health savings account. And so if you happen to work for an employer that does contribute to your HSA, it would benefit you to open your HSA to receive those free funds. And the major difference between an employer contributing to an HSA versus a 401k is that if your employer does contribute to your HSA, many do not require you to actually make any contributions yourself. They consider this as part of your health benefits and so they may just contribute the money without requiring you to match anything. Unlike a 401k where if you want the employer to contribute you must contribute as well in order to receive the 401k match. And with an IRA your employer technically cannot contribute to your IRA. And so that's one great thing that makes the HSA better than both the 401k and an IRA. Next is number nine and that's the fact that you can do a one-time rollover. And with this rollover you can actually roll over from a traditional IRA into your health savings account. Unfortunately, you're only able to do this once in your lifetime. And so when you do actually choose to do this, make sure you max out your HSA. If you at least have the amount that would maximize your contribution to your HSA for the year, whether that's for a single person with $3,600 in 2021 or $3,650 in 2022, or for a family HSA, which would be $7,200 or $7,300 in 2022. Unfortunately, you can't actually do a transfer from your HSA to your IRA, and there are many reasons why you wouldn't want to do that anyway, and I'll touch on those as we go through this top 10. So if you do take advantage of this one-time rollover, make sure that you maximize your rollover by contributing to the max that you can contribute to for your HSA in the year that you do the rollover. Next is number eight, which is the fact that there are no RMDs. For those who aren't familiar, an RMD is a required minimum distribution. These are withdrawals that you are required to make once you turn 72, and that's for traditional 401ks as well as traditional IRAs. But with an HSA, you don't have to worry about that, and you're not required to distribute or withdraw any of the funds in your HSA. There's no specific age limit. In fact, even if you were to pass away and you left your spouse, I your husband or your wife as the beneficiary to your HSA, they also will not be required to withdraw any funds. They can actually continue to use the HSA the same way that you did. The only time that there will be required distributions is if the beneficiary was not a spouse, then that person will be required to withdraw all of the funds from the HSA at the time of your death. Next, we go into number seven, which is the fact that there is no age limit. And so as long as you have an HSA, as long as you qualify to contribute to an HSA, that's why one, you're still in the workforce, and two, you still have a high deductible health plan, then you are still eligible to contribute to your HSA, no matter how old you are. And so if you're an older person and you still want to work, you still work somewhere that provides a high deductible health plan, then you are still allowed to contribute to your HSA for as long as you want. Now previously this was not true for IRAs, but they did actually update this to where if you have a traditional or a Roth IRA, as long as you're still working, then you can continue to contribute to your IRA as well. Next is number six, which is the fact that there's no income limit. And so with a traditional IRA, there are income limits to the point where you are eligible to receive a tax deduction for the funds that you actually add to your traditional IRA. And then with a Roth IRA, there are income limits to the point where you are no longer able to contribute to your Roth IRA. However, with an HSA, there is no income limit. So no matter how much you make, as long as you're still working, you still have a high deductible health plan, you can contribute to your HSA up to the maximum amount and you will receive all of the available tax deductions based on your contributions. So make sure you max it out in order to receive that full tax deductible benefit. Now, the fifth reason you would want to max out your HSA before your 401k and your IRA is the fact that it actually takes less money to max it out. So if an HSA, if you're an individual in 2021, you can contribute up to $3,600. If you have a family HSA, then you can contribute up to $7,200. And then now going into 2022, 
you can contribute up to $3,650 as a single person or up to $7,300 as a family. However, as an individual with an IRA, the maximum you can contribute is $6,000. So it takes almost twice as much money in order to max out your IRA as it does your HSA. And then once you go into the 401k, that maximum contribution is $19,500 in 2021. And so if you had limited funds and you could only maximize one of the accounts, you of course would wanna start with the account that you can max out the soonest. Not only just because it's less money, but also for the additional reasons that I'm gonna talk about in this video going through this top 10. Now we're only at number five, and some of you who are watching probably are already convinced and wanna open that HSA. So if you are eligible and you have a high deductible health plan, you don't actually have to use your employer's HSA. You can actually choose your own HSA. And so there are two HSAs that I personally use. One is with Fidelity and the other is Lively because they use TD Ameritrade as the custodian for the investment side of that health savings account. And so if you'd like to open an HSA account that's not connected to your employer, I'll have a referral link to Lively as well as links to my review of Lively as well as my review of Fidelity's HSA account so you can see which one would work best for you. And last but not least, we'll talk about the last four and all of these last four reasons relate to taxes. And so number four is the fact that you can make pre-tax contributions. Now you can also make pre-tax contributions to a traditional 401k as well as a traditional IRA. However, as I mentioned before, in order to max out those contributions, you would actually need more money to max those out. And so while it isn't any different from a traditional 401k or traditional IRA, you should still max this out first just because it takes less money to max it out. Now next is number three, which makes it slightly different from the traditional 401k and the traditional IRA. And that's the fact that it's not subject to FICA tax. Now for those that don't know, FICA tax is what we pay and it represents what is paid to Social Security and Medicare tax. And half of that is paid by your employer and the other half is paid by you. And so both you and the employer pay 7.65% tax for FICA. However, with an HSA, when you make those contributions, those funds are actually not subject to FICA. So you're saving 7.65% tax on the contributions you make to your HSA. So that's even what makes it different from the traditional 401k and the traditional IRA because they are still subject to FICA. Now, number two is what makes the HSA similar to the Roth IRA as well as the Roth 401k. And that's the fact that all of your contributions can grow tax-free. Yes, that's right. You actually get the combination of the pre-tax benefits of a traditional 401k or traditional IRA, as well as the free tax growth of a Roth IRA or a Roth 401k. So it's like a combination of both the traditional and the Roth versions of a 401k and an IRA when you put money into your HSA. And so that's included whether you just have the interest from your health savings account or the actual growth if you were to invest your HSA funds in stocks, bonds, or index funds. And then last but not least, the number one reason why you would want to max out your HSA before your 401k and before your IRA is the fact that you can get tax-free withdrawals today and in retirement, as long as you use those funds for medical expenses. So that's right, not only do you get the combined benefit of a traditional 401k or traditional IRA by putting in money pre-tax, and you also get the added benefit of those funds growing tax-free, just like a Roth 401k or a Roth IRA, but in addition to that, unlike a 401k, whether traditional or Roth, and unlike an IRA, whether traditional or Roth, you can actually withdraw funds today as long as you use them for medical expenses. And there is no tax for those withdrawals. And I actually have a few videos where I talk about these details, especially a specific cashback stacking strategy that I also use with my HSA to take advantage of paying for my medical bills today on my own, using a cashback credit card, using cashback apps, getting that additional cash back and then I can reimburse myself immediately or in the future as long as I save my receipts with the funds in my HSA and there's no tax when I make those withdrawals. Now, if you were to make a withdrawal before you reach retirement age with an IRA or 401k, with only a few exceptions, there's gonna be a penalty for those withdrawals. The only time you can actually withdraw from a 401k or an IRA without worrying about any tax penalties or worrying about any exceptions is if you have a Roth 401k 
or a Roth IRA, but if you have a traditional 401k or a traditional IRA, then those funds are taxed once you withdraw them. Now the same applies for an HSA. If you make withdrawals once you're in retirement and they're not related to medical expenses, it'll be treated just like a traditional 401k or traditional IRA and you'll have to pay taxes on those withdrawals. But if you only use the withdrawals for medical expenses, then there's absolutely no tax. This means that you've contributed to your HSA without paying any income tax. You also didn't pay any social security or Medicare tax and your funds were allowed to grow tax-free and you were allowed to withdraw tax-free when you use them for medical expenses. And that's why they say the HSA is a triple tax advantage account because of those three tax advantages of putting money into your HSA. And so once you actually break it down and you think about the top 10 things in this video, an HSA is essentially a combination of a traditional IRA or Roth IRA with a few added benefits as well. You take the best of both worlds, you combine them into one account, and you're allowed to actually make withdrawals today as long as you use them for medical expenses. As we all know, the cost of healthcare has increased significantly over time, and there's no reason to believe that they won't continue to increase from now until the time that you actually retire. So being able to contribute to your HSA and not paying tax and also withdraw to pay for those medical expenses in the future, medical expenses that are probably going to be a lot higher just for the fact that you're older, you're probably going to have more health issues in the future than you currently have. And so you want to have a couple hundred thousand dollars, if not even maybe millions of dollars saved in order to pay for those medical expenses. And the only way you're going to grow it to that type of level where you have hundreds of thousands of dollars or perhaps millions of dollars in your HSA is to invest those funds in the stock market, whether that's individual stocks, index funds, or mutual funds, which you will have that option with your investment side of your health savings account. And so after going through this video, were you actually aware of the top 10 benefits that I mentioned in this video? If you weren't, let us know in the comments below which ones were a surprise to you or which ones you didn't know about. Also, out of the top 10, which ones do you believe are the most beneficial? Make sure you leave a comment below. All right, thanks for taking the time out of your day to watch this video, I really appreciate it. If you're not a current member of the Mobile Money Nation, all you need to do is hit the subscribe button down below, hit the like button because you really like this video, and also hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I create a video just like this. Again, thanks for watching, have a great day.